With increased herbicides, you end up with an increased uh, fungus, fusarium, which creates mycotoxins, a decrease in trace minerals, and a possible impact on gut bacteria because these herbicides are antibacterial and they're in higher concentrations so they can mess up our, our gut bacteria. Chickens fed Liberty Link herbicide tolerant corn died at twice the rate, but this was an industry funded study designed so poorly that even a doubling of the death rate was statistically insignificant. <laughs> the fifth possible problem is that genes might transfer into our gut bacteria or into our own DNA. Now, this was of grave concern to the FDA scientists reviewing the first flavor saver tomato. The flavor saver tomato uses an antibiotic resistant marker gene. We discussed that before. The Division of Anti-Infective Drugs wrote a memo complaining about this tomato. And they said, in all capital letters, it would be a serious health hazard to introduce a gene that codes for antibiotic resistance into the intestinal flora of the general population. Can anyone guess why? <laughs> they were concerned that this antibiotic resistant marker gene might transfer to pathogenic bacteria allowing the bacteria to be invincible to one or more antibiotics. But the biotech industry and the political appointees at the FDA said not to worry. Genes are destroyed during digestion. Transfer is impossible. Well, they finally tested this in a study published in 2004, the only human feeding study ever conducted on genetically engineered foods. It was a brilliant study. They took seven human volunteers who had colostomy bags. They had their lower intestines removed. Not for the study. <laughs> they fed them a soy burger and a soy milkshake, genetically engineered. They looked in the colostomy bag and were surprised to find how much intact genetically engineered soy DNA had survived passage through the stomach and small intestine. It was supposed to be destroyed, and not all of it was. But in three of the seven volunteers, before they were fed the soy burger and soy milkshake, the scientists found inside the DNA of the gut bacteria the gene that Monsanto scientists had found in the chemical waste dump that they had put into soybeans, that had been put into the food supply, that had somehow in the past been eaten by these three people from England and had integrated into the DNA, along with that promoter, that on switch, and it was functioning. They had Roundup ready gut bacteria, unkillable with Roundup herbicide. So this means that long after we stop eating genetically engineered foods, we might have little hitchhikers that have left the food and joined us in our internal community to bless us with whatever. Now, what can transfer? The promoter did transfer, according to this study, and that promoter is a, is a very aggressive on switch made from a virus. And they discovered that that on switch can turn on genes not just the gene to which it's attached, but other genes, natural genes, permanently at high volume. So if that promoter transfers to gut bacteria, it might overproduce an allergen, a toxin, a carcinogen, or something good. We don't know. It's a genetic roulette. The antibiotic-resistant marker gene might transfer, causing super diseases. The Roundup-ready gene did transfer, and that has properties of a known allergen. According to the WHO, if that particular property is there, they should never commercialize the GM crop because it might cause allergic reactions. But that's a recommendation, and it's not enforced. And that's the protein that's produced inside of us continuously. The Liberty Link gene, another herbicide-tolerant gene, it might have the capacity of turning non-toxic residues in Liberty Link crops into herbicide inside of us. The BT gene 
might transfer. So this is where I meant eating a genetically engineered corn chip might transform your intestinal flora into living pesticide factories, possibly for the rest of our lives. And the viral gene might transfer, creating viral proteins that cause a permanent suppression of our viral defenses or toxic effects. We don't know. These have not been tested. I want, to, I want to emphasize the only one that's been tested is Roundup Ready. The rest is theoretical. Now, if I stop the discussion here at a general scientific talk with probiotic scientists ready in the audience to pounce, during the Q&A, they would assure the audience that I was a fear monger because we've been eating DNA for centuries and thousands of years, and if gene transfer were a problem, we would be green like plants, we'd have photosynthesis, it's simply not a problem. And this is their intellectual, scientific argument as to why we shouldn't be concerned about gene transfer. I love when they do that, it's such a setup, it's like a slow motion softball waiting for me to hit it out of the park. You see, it turns out plant genes don't readily transfer to bacteria in our gut. Bacteria genes transfer all the time. And one of the main reasons why they do is because there's similarity in the sequence. But the sequence in plant genes is substantially different and therefore very unlikely to transfer. It's also longer, making it very unlikely to transfer. The genes that are in the soy, corn, cotton, and canola are from bacteria. They have the similarity. Second, if genes transfer from plants into bacteria, it is unlikely that they will function. The promoter, the on switch in plants, does not work in bacteria. The genes, the, this promoter that they put into the genes that they put into soy, corn, cotton, and canola comes from a virus. It works in bacteria. Another point, if the plant gene transfers to bacteria, it's got something inside it called introns, little sections that get in the way, where the cell has to remove those introns and reconnect in order to produce a protein. That happens inside higher organisms. It happens inside us. It does not happen inside bacteria. So if it transferred, the bacteria would have no clue how to make a protein from it. It wouldn't work. The genes that are put into soy, corn, cotton, and canola don't have introns. So, the natural barriers that have stopped plant genes from populating our gut bacteria and functioning have been dismantled. Which means we may be shuttling all of these genes from genetically engineered crops colonizing our bacteria. Now, the big question is, is there a selective advantage for the bacteria to take these genes? Because if it is, then it'll live long, be fruitful, and multiply. We don't know. There's herbicide-tolerant genes in there, and we eat large amounts of herbicide on these herbicide-tolerant crops because they get sprayed by so much herbicide. And that means that there may be a selective advantage because those bacteria won't die because they're Roundup-ready gut bacteria. So we may be altering that, such that precious area of our health and digestion, the gut bacteria, altering it throughout North America.